Common in the Morning. Common Sense Radio. Media is in a tough spot right now. As they've got a real credibility problem. As they continually report stories with unnamed sources. And now NBC is running away with this story about how Putin directly ordered the hacks. That's based on, again, an unnamed source. Then you have MSNBC cut number 16 here where they are... Because there are multiple news people reporting the same story, it suddenly becomes a fact in in their mind. It's so, okay. Now we have multiple reports that and, you and like, tell- well, just because you have multiple reports doesn't make it any more true. Chris Wallace knows a little bit about this kind of stuff. <laughs> it used to be back in the old days, Chris Wallace that you had to have at least three independent sources for something to be even reported, correct or not? Uh, two. Two. That was the, the Woodward Bernstein rule during Watergate. Two independent sources. Two. Okay. All right. I thought it was three. I was holding myself to a higher standard back in the day, I well, guess. Well, there you go. Yeah. But, but you know what? You, but, but you, I've noticed this, uh, and, and obviously the use of unnamed sources is common, but, you know, I think people are at a higher level. Their antennas are up a little higher these days. And the believability of these stories tends to be, uh, I think, slightly diminished over time because I think the media has lost some degree of credibility. Well, the media may have lost credibility. Of people. Let me put it a different way. People may be more skeptical about the media. But you still go about your business regardless of whether people – Trust you or not. I mean, if you have uh, two good sources, frankly, if you have one good source, I mean, if Donald Trump said to me, uh, I, I, I'm going to pick Rex Tillerson to be the, uh, you know, on background, I'm going to pick Rex Tillerson to be the Secretary of State, I'd go with it and I'd, I'd report it. You know, you have to be confident of your source and confident that your source doesn't have a, an axe to grind or uh, is spinning you. But if you're confident of that source, look, I, 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 there are two separate issues here. Do I believe that the Russians hacked the the election to uh, disrupt it? Yes. Do I believe that it's possible? I, I I can't say this because I don't I don't have any sources that have, have told me this. But do I believe it's certainly possible that they were trying to favor Trump uh, and to uh, hurt Hillary Clinton? Yeah, I think that's likely. Just because of when you look at what was leaked. It was overwhelmingly stuff that was embarrassing to the Democrats and not to the Republicans. Now let's get to the real key question here. So what? Uh, you know, let, let's just, I mean, if, if, if there was a single bit of evidence that Trump was in any way in cahoots with this, that would be extremely damaging, and that's a whole different issue. But because the Russians had an agenda uh and pursued it and 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 look i think that's serious and i think we have to talk about cybersecurity and we have to talk about whether or not we should strike back at the russians does does this in any way diminish uh donald trump's right to be president of the united states in the electoral process no it doesn't um you know there are all kinds of bad actors you could argue that what james comey did hurt clinton or what uh, nbc did in leaking the tape about uh you know, Access Hollywood hurt Trump. But the fact is that, that there was an election. Uh, there's no indication at all that the election was, you know, the results were in any way altered as a result of the Russians or anybody else, the actual vote count. Uh, he's the president. And, and all of these efforts to, you know, say uh, electors should have a, a, an intelligence briefing, I mean, that's simply an effort by uh, the Democrats to try to either, one, overturn the results of the election to have the electors vote against Trump, or two, to diminish him and delegitimize him as president. And I don't see any basis for either of those. It seems, too, though, in reporting, uh, back to the rules of journalism, so to speak, that that things have uh, morphed over the years. Like, for instance, locally here, like when I was, when I was in TV, 
I still am in TV, but I'm not doing the regular news. But when I was a regular news reporter in TV, we would never think of reporting, for instance, scanner traffic. Like traffic you hear on the scanner was always deemed to be unreliable and not to be reported because it wasn't to be used as a source because it's scanner traffic. Now, it's common for people just simply to report what they heard on a scanner as long no, as they I, say that would that would not be to me a source. I mean, that's just somebody on the scanner, and I'm not saying it's it it, it isn't true. But right. I agree with you. I don't think that that meets the standard. But but look, if you were a reporter in Washington who had very good intelligence sources, and you had the director of the CIA or you know somebody, I'm not saying he's been leaking, but but you know somebody putting this information out. Uh, that that you trusted and had a relationship with, and particularly if you had two sources. Uh, but you know, uh, why wouldn't you report it? Right, but it used to be though that you know you were we were taught that basically you should always insist, uh, try your hardest to to put the person on the record. Yeah, I know, but that's that. I mean, I just with all due respect, that is a canard. I mean. Yes, you try, and then they say no, and frankly, you don't try that hard because because they're not they're not you know they're taking telling you information they're never gonna I mean you could sit there and have the conversation if it makes you feel good, but it, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, right. I was when I covered the White House for six years, uh, people leaked information to me, and depending on how the source was. I mean, I got a piece of information once about something that had gone on in the National Security Council. It was leaked to me by somebody who was a member of the National Security Council and had been in the meeting where it had happened. That was a pretty good source. Yeah. And and you know what? It turned out to be 100% true. Well, let me ask you this then. Let's go back to the story that, that made headlines over the weekend. It was the New York Times, and they quoted a source as saying that 17 different national intelligence agencies have determined that the Russians attempted to affect the election results, that they tapped into the RNC emails, but didn't report those at all, but did the DNC ones. Now, that person used those sources, and what I was trying to find out is, well, why would, if if indeed it's this important and 17 Intelligence agencies. Well, he, didn't, he didn't talk, to, or whoever the report was, didn't talk to all seventeen agencies. He right. Obviously, got that from one or two uh, people, or maybe it, you know. See, th- this is a story that's that's fraught with politics because there's no question, it seems to me, and you can see it, that the Democrats are trying to use this to hurt Trump, either right. as I say, to overturn the election, or at least to hurt him as the new president. And so you have to ask yourself to what degree. Is there a political agenda here? Which is, even if there's a political agenda, doesn't mean it isn't true. True, it still may be true. I mean, every people don't leak because they like you. They leak because there's something they in this particular case of the NSC. This person didn't like the <clears throat> the decision that had been made, and hoped that by leaking the story to me, that you know it would get out and people would sit there and say, "Well, that's a dumb idea," <laughs> and they they push back on it. Yeah, well, and but but immediately the flags went up for me though. Is I'm thinking, well, okay, if it's that important of a story, why why would someone want to be anonymous in talking because they, about? Because they no, come, uh, come on, Jamie, you know that because they, you know, I mean, let's say, all right, let's take an example. Let's say it was the top Democrat, and I'm again, this is pure supposition. Right. Let's say it was a Democrat on the Intelligence Committee, or let's say it was a member of the CIA or a member of the Intelligence Committee. Uh, a community, but you know they they don't want their fingerprints on that, and you have to make a judgment as to whether or not. You, I mean, you're certainly being used in any case because that's why they're telling it to you is they want you to put it out, but you've got to decide is this is this the truth or is it not the truth? And look, there sometimes there are sources who tell you stuff, and it turns out it isn't the truth. They are advancing an agenda, and you know you can get burned, but you obviously then you don't go back to that source and. You know, well, what you I'm getting at is pretty careful before you go out that you trust the source, right. particularly if it's a fairly dramatic story. What I'm getting at is, if the story is true, wouldn't like, for instance, President Obama come out and say the Russians did this and this is unacceptable, blah blah blah? Because if it's that big of a story, you would think, why would anybody want to be off the record on it or or on background on it? Because you'd want to make sure this story got out, and you'd want 
You know, the head but, of the... But you, because you're not authorized to say it. Let's say, all right, let's say uh, it, it's a deputy at the CIA. Right. Okay? He's, he, and he has his agenda, but he's not a lot, I mean, he's not authorized to say it. He'd get in trouble for saying it. Right. Or he doesn't want his fingerprints and to take the blowback from it. Or maybe he's, I mean, you can write a million scenarios where he's hoping to keep a job in the Trump administration of the CIA and doesn't want to get fired. So, I mean, there are all kinds of reasons that people, in this particular case, this was a member of the National Security Council, but he knew if he, if he was on the record telling me this story, that he was going to get in trouble in the, in the administration because he wasn't supposed to talk about the inner workings. He wasn't authorized to do that. And, in fact, in this particular case, he was trying to work against what the president had, uh, had decided. He thought it was a bad idea. Right, but what I'm in saying is... In this particular case, he was right. Right, too. It was a bad idea. Right, but what I'm saying is it, this seems to be a story of, of national import, and if it's true, you would think that the head of the CIA... Or somebody would come out and say this happened. There's no reason why this has to be well. No, but secret. Let's, say, let, let's say you are. Let's say it's John. Bre- let's say John Brennan had nothing to do with this leak, and he thinks it was outrageous that they leaked it. He doesn't want to go out in the record now. I mean, he didn't have anything to do with it, or maybe he did have everything to do with it. But in either case, he doesn't want to get involved in this. Right, but what I mean, I'm saying it's, is, it's, it's complicated. But but and and yes, you would like people to go on the record and tell you things. But I mean, all right, the other day. Somebody calls me up and says, uh, and it's a person I know that's been in the meeting, says uh, Rick Perry is going to be the new energy secretary. Now, I'm going to put that on the air because I, I trust this person. This person has no agenda whatsoever other than trying to help me and gives me that information. So I put it out. Uh, you know, I report it. A, a, a senior source uh, in the transition says that Rick Perry is going to be the energy secretary. But on the other hand, he doesn't want to go. I mean, this isn't apples and oranges, but he doesn't want to go public because if he did, he'd get it chewed out. What I'm saying is if my government knows that the Russians were trying to affect an election, why wouldn't my government want to tell me? Why would they have to leak it? Because there's a difference in in, uh, the the diplomatic situation between leaking something and having it be an official announcement of the United States government. I mean, in the particular case of Russia trying to affect it, the, the entire intelligence community came out in October and said that, that the Russians were behind the hack. They didn't, now, there's, there's a step further in this last week, which is that they say it wasn't just to disrupt the election, it was to try to help Donald Trump. Um, but you can, and, and that I don't know, because obviously we've now found out that there's a disagreement, and the FBI does not have to believe they have evidence that right. that was the motive. Right. I mean, well, so that, that, that's I, why I they didn't come out officially. Respect, I think you're barking up the wrong tree, because to me, the real story of this week is not the question of, well, wh- who, wh- who leaked it and how was it reported. To me, the interesting thing is, and you can see it in the NBC story, which now says that Putin was behind the effort to help Trump is that it seems to me that whether it's Democrats in Congress or Democrats in the intelligence community, there's a concerted effort here to delegitimize right. Donald Trump as president. That, to me, is the really interesting. Yes. And it's what we're going to be focusing on on Sunday is, you know, for all the talk, remember during the campaign and what I asked in the third debate, would you respect the results, accept the results of the election? And Trump said, I'll keep you in suspense, and people's heads blew up. It's the Democrats now. I mean, you have a congressman, Don Beyer of Virginia, congressman, who's now saying that, you know, because it, it, it is mandated that the electors are going to vote on Monday. And, and once they voted, once they have, you know, he's reached over 270, it's over. Uh, and now he's saying, let's delay that. I mean, that sounds to me like there's an effort out there to try, you know, and, until there's an intelligence briefing, there's an effort out there to... Uh, try to overturn the election. Right. Well, cool. Well, we'll be watching, and I just want to let you know that um, you just said I was barking up the wrong tree. I'm not the one who's on tape barking. <laughs> I mean, she she barked on tape. All right. Would me. you play the other tape right now? <laughs> the other one I have? Of me. Uh, let me hold Talking on a second. Talking about you. Yeah. You, my friend, are a dope. 
There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Always good talking to you, friend. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'd probably put everybody to sleep with that conversation. Oh no, no, but... people. No, believe me, my people are. I, I, I believe me when I when I speak. Uh, it, when it, I speak, it just comes to pass. I, 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 trust me, my people were very interested in this conversation. Okay. I just want to let you know. All right. And they love you. All right. I, well, I love them right back. All right. Is it cold there? It is so it's, cold here. It's like 20 something degrees, but wind chill, it's in the teens. Yeah, it's like 17 here. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's, not it's, good. it's not inhabitable. No. All well, right, if you're indoors, it is. It's fine. Right, no, that's true. But knowing it's that way out there is You know the best thing enough. about being an anchor, having risen somewhat in the business? Yes. You stay indoors. Yeah. You don't have to go outdoors. <laughs> I mean, I look at these folks. I know. The, the, the young Buck Street reporters, and they're out, in the you know, like for the inauguration, and I'm so happy. It's right. like, this is great. Covering fires and all that other... That's right. It's like, I just get to be indoors. I don't care what I have to talk about. I just want to be indoors. Right on. All right, buddy. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll be watching you indoors on Sunday. All right, That's Chris David. Wallace, Fox Bye. News Sunday. I, I sense that he didn't. The, the, my point is that we knew the story wasn't true since it's of national import and nobody was stepping up to right, say it. Right. I That's don't what think I was trying. I don't. I was, think that's what I was trying to get at is mm-hmm. is is if it's so true, why wouldn't they want to say something? Well, you're not going to start a war with Russia, you know. Anyway, I tried. Bye. <laughs>